Hey what is up guys Alex here and this channel if you're new here is all about demystifying your cursor music and explaining you how to make music like this. Or this. Or maybe this. Or as a last example, this. So this type of orchestral music. So this tutorial specifically is for the beginners who have yet to start with orchestral music or for those who already started but still have to write their first complete piece. So I'm going to give you eight advices on how to get started. And I remember like I'm doing this because I remember when I started four years ago with no musical knowledge, no musical background or skills at all, I had all the questions in the world about orchestral music. Stuff like, do I need to learn music theory to write orchestral music? What type of software or hardware do I need? What are the exercises I can do to get better at music fast? So I had all of these questions and many of those were unanswered. I see on forums still to this day that some of these questions are unaddressed or unanswered. So I wanted to make this video to really help you guys because like it took me a few years to get to these levels, you know, and a few years of severe hard work every single day. So what I do in this channel is I take the knowledge that I internalized during those years of training and I give it to you guys, you know, because I want to see a lot of new composers chasing their dreams. So, uh... You know, if you're interested in learning this kind of stuff, I suggest you to check out the rest of this channel right away and also check the rest of this tutorial, which is quite long but full of very, very important information. The first question you might have is, is music theory needed to write orchestral music? And the short answer is no, but there is a long answer that you need to uh, hear. So music theory is pretty much like, personally, the music you hear from my channel, etc. Um, personally, I do not know a lot of music theory, but I'm still able to write this kind of stuff. And also, like, the lack of music theory did not prevent me from having my music used on mov movie trailers, you know? So, you can get big even if you do not learn or if you do not know a lot of music theory. Although, you know, you should consider that music theory is a very powerful weapon, so... If you learn it and you use it right, it's going to enhance your music. It's going to make your music more interesting and make you a faster composer. It's going to be way more effortless for you to write amazing uh, sounding music. The good thing to do is to learn a little bit of the basic basics, despite whatever type of music you want to make. And, you know, if you want to make, I don't know, Mozart or, you know, Debussy or, you know, classical genre of music, maybe it's good to learn music theory in depth. But if you want to make more simplistic stuff like the things you heard now, or I don't know, maybe you want to make ADM or stuff like that, you know? Maybe it's not as required, you know? But despite that, I do suggest you to go on musictheory.net and check out these basic lessons that they have on this website for free. These are amazing and they are based on the very core concepts of scales, intervals, chords, and you know, these core harmonic concepts that you really need to learn despite whatever genre you make. It takes, you know, an hour or two to learn this stuff. And after you've learned this, like, you're good to go, basically, you know? So this website is amazing because one, is free. Second, like, the lessons are pretty much like they're well structured and, uh, they have these visual references and the text is really simple to understand. And as you go uh, forth, uh, you know, the visual references changes. So you can see with your eyes what they are explaining to you and also listen because there are audible examples of, you know, the text. So this website is amazing. And I basically started from here, you know, and then with this basic knowledge, I write my music. Now, in my case, I did not learn music theory because I wanted rather to learn to rely on my creativity and on my ear. And also because 
I didn't want to wait to get started. You know, when I started to compose music four years ago, I was like full on. I just wanted to write music right away. I did not want to spend month, months or years on books to, you know, get started. So that's some of the reason why maybe back like in the future, maybe I'm going to go back and study a little bit more and invest a little bit more time into refining that type of knowledge. But so far it helped me to go by ear and by creative intuition. And since I only work with those two muscles, they really developed in me, you know, because since I couldn't rely on theory, I had to rely a lot on my ear and on my creativity. And that's why like, you know, I, end up writing, I mean, good sounding music, it sounds good to me. But anyway, you know, you can even go the, the, the other way and learn music theory and do not rely on your ear or creativity so much, but you should be careful because I think despite the type, the, the type of music you want to make, creativity is really important to learn. And being creative is not taught to you with uh, music theory, in my um, opinion, you know, because I see a lot of people who maybe study music theory thinking like it's the secret key to unlock the, their musical powers and they forget to practice creativity. So what they end up becoming is those people who know a lot about music theory, but they do not know how to apply it. So when they write um, music, they do not know how to get started. They don't know all the rules, the perfect ways to do it, but when they have to implant the idea, you know, they do not know how to do it. And they are paralyzed, actually, by all the rules they know. So there, is, there are these type of people, those who have 100% music theory, zero creativity and zero ear skills. And there are also people who have, you know, creativity, ear skills, and also no music theory. And these people are legends. Like, when you hear their music, you're blown away and they're freaking amazing. And there are also renegades like me who know creativity and, and their ear is really developed and they know not much about music theory. So, you know, there are different paths. And um, there is the legend path, which is maybe the best. If you can, you can pick that, but it's kind of slow. There is the renegade path where you start right away and maybe it's a little bit harder for you to write music at first, but then you develop that creative, in, creative in, um, intuition and that ear skills and there are composers, like successful composers, who are renegades, like Hans Zimmer, for example. He writes amazing music, one of the most successful composers of our time, and he doesn't know much about music theory and doesn't know how to read music, you know? So, like, you do not need... Like, there is no one single path, but the path to avoid is the path of the sage who does not know how to apply his knowledge. So, and, you know, whatever you choose to do with music theory, also remember to practice creativity. The second question you might ask yourself is, what software do I need? So one thing you need is surely a DAW, so a digital audio workstation, like uh, for example, FS Studio here, you know, these programs that you use to write music and you want to make sure to use a professional one. Do not get, maybe, I don't know, like there is GarageBand, which is the one which is included with Mac computers, but it's not really professional uh, for what I know. The dolls I suggested to get is are, you know, for example, FL Studio or Cubase or Studio One, Logic or Pro Tools and stuff, you know, those, those five, I think, also Reaper, those six are the main DAWs, also Reason, so seven, they are the main DAWs and each DAW has its own pros and its own cons, there is no perfect DAW, you know, I find myself nicely with FL Studio, but also Cubase is pretty great and Logic seems to be the hybrid between FL Studio and Cubase for what I know. So those three are actually my favorite, but just get one of these. And also what you need to get are VST samples, like uh, professionally recorded orchestral libraries. And these are quite expensive, you know? So the thing is, I talked about this in the mixing tutorial I made, like um, the, the fundamental mixing group. So uh, the thing is, these, the, these uh, sample libraries are recorded by professionals in professional ways, with professional gear, in, you know, orchestral venues and stuff. So, of course, they cost a little bit. But there is this thing here, Composer Cloud, which gives you, for uh, a price of uh, 30 bucks per month, gives you instant access to all the uh, East-West, uh, like, all the East-West sample libraries. And East-West is the, um, the company that made Symphonic Orchestra and Hollywood Orchestra. So you have lots of orchestral instruments which are very high quality 
for just 30 bucks a month. Now, these aren't my favorite, you know, orchestra instruments. The East West libraries are quite old. I think the Hollywood series is like from 2010. I think. I'm not sure, but I think it's really old. And when you use it, like if you use it along with other newer libraries, you notice a difference in the in sound. You know, the East West sound is much more quiet, much more elegant, much more it's much more hard to make it shine, you know? While the new libraries are much more prepared, so if you get a new library like Metropolis Arc, you're good to go. Like, um, it's going to be easier to make it sound good. But still, like the East West libraries here are professionally recorded, and for thirty bucks a month, I think they're really great because you have access to every type of orchestral sound and more, and you can use this to practice. So. What I would do as a beginner with the choice of sample library, I would get Composer Cloud. And there are also other deals like Composer Cloud X or Composer Cloud Students. But this one is like 15 bucks a month, but only gives you access to seven libraries from them. And this one gives you access to, you know, uh, actually you haven't checked this one out, but you can check it out yourself. Like type Composer Cloud in Google and you're going to find this page. Otherwise, type this URL and there is all the information here. And I already did a few months with them because there are some sounds out of, out of their orchestra libraries which I which I enjoy. So I use it from time to time, and I really I really recommend this, especially for beginners to get this. And this is for thirty bucks a month, a good way, you know, to get started because it gives you, again, access to everything, and you can use these instruments to practice at first. Then, when you get a little bit better, you might want to invest into separated libraries like Cinematic Strings or Metropolis Arc or Cinebrass and stuff, but there is going to be time for that later, you know? Get this uh, collection and get started now. The third question you might ask yourself is, what type of computer do I need? What type of hardware do I need? So, here's the thing, like, if you want to write orchestral music on your computer, it's going to have, like, it's going to be really, uh, how to say, hard on your computer because orchestral libraries are quite heavy to handle, you know? So what you need are basically three main things, you know? A good CPU, a good amount of RAM, and a fast enough hard drive. So a good CPU will be like an uh, Intel, Intel i7, so for example this one, and I think this is the, the best uh, choice you can have, and it costs around 300 bucks. Now, mine is an Intel i7 uh, 4770, so it's much older than this one, but it's still quite good, and it might cost around 250, I think. But, you know, get an i7, and uh, because the CPU is the most important thing, and it basically manages everything, uh, and also playback, so if you want your playback to be clear without you know, uh, clipping noise, distortion noises, or without playback errors and freezing and stuff, a good CPU is what is going to make your playback flawless while you compose your song. So it's really important. Like, I think it's the most important piece. Then you want to ha you want to get at least like maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM because loading the samples, like your orchestra samples, into a project, uh, what it does, it basically takes those samples and it loads them into the RAM of your computer as long as the project is open and as long as those samples are open in your project. Now, there are ways in which to reduce the amount of RAM usage from a sample library, which I'm going to mention in another tutorial. But you should keep in mind that, you know, if you're writing an orchestral track, you're going to use many different elements, many different instruments, and it's going to be very easy to really feel that RAM. So in my example, I use 16 gigabytes and many times I find myself right at the limit, you know? So I'm going to consider to do an update later on, but you might want to start with 16 gigabytes or even maybe eight or 12, you know? And then what you need is a good hard drive because hard drive determines how uh, fast your computer is going to read the project files or how fast, yeah, the samples is going to be, are going to be loaded into the RAM, I think. So, uh, you know, a fast hard drive is going to limit your waiting times and make everything faster. And, you know, hard drives, I think their speed depending depends on if you're watch if you're searching for a hard drive, it depends on RPM. So the higher the RPM is, the faster it's going to be, you know. So this, for example, here is quite fast, I think. 
and this one is kind of slower but you know it has three terabytes this one has one terabyte and another thing you might want as well as well is you know having enough bytes to store your um libraries so like an aggressor library can can have a size from i don't know four gigabytes to even one like 60 gigabytes and stuff like that so you might want to get a very large hard drive so this western digital here which this i think is a good choice because it has nice speed and also one terabyte of, of um space or size so it's a nice hard drive to store your um yeah your sample libraries and your projects i will i would uh suggest you to store your projects on an external drive so if your main drive in which your operating system is were to fail you can still save those project files because they're not into your main drives for example another thing i suggested to do is if you can to get an ssd drive so these are basically much faster than uh, hard drives because of their technology and they're also more expensive so what i did in my case is i slowly bought some of these like i began buying uh 250 gigabytes ssd where i only put the, the libraries i used I used the most then as time passed i got another 500 gigabytes ssd in which i put other sample libraries and my project files but a good thing to do is to just get you know if you do not have a lot of budget to get a nice hard drive you know to put along with your main drive and to uh, put your sample libraries and project files into so three things you know cpu ram and hard drive these are the three most important things then another thing you might want is a midi keyboard if you know how to play the keyboard because it's going to help you to record music with the keyboard if you do not write music with the keyboard i still suggest you to get one not maybe not an expensive one but just get a you know basic midi keyboard with basic like with the notes and <laughs> you know the mod wheel and the pitch band these are two very important things and if you have knobs that you can link to parameters into your DAW, it's even better so i have this one um this is the one i have i think yeah something like this it's not the exact model but uh yeah this is pretty much similar to my keyboard and uh, you can also get a cheaper one you do not need to have like an expensive keyboard as long as it works you know so yeah and the last thing i suggested to do is to when you're writing like if you if you're buying a new computer try to buy it piece by piece and then buy the case and then you know build the computer on your own because it's going to be much more economic to do it that way rather than buying a pre-assembled computer and you also have the freedom to write the pieces you need you know instead of having to buy a computer with night nice uh, hard drive and nice ram and nice cpu and having to get one with a nice graphic card because the only configuration you find like that have a nice graphic card as well you know in that example since you have a nice graphic card as well included it's going to cost you more compared to right you know make a computer yourself buying the single pieces yourself without getting superfluous stuff so if superfluous is even a word in english but anyway yeah try to assemble your computer yourself because it's going to be more economic and it gives you more freedom okay with hardware software and music theory taken care of now the fourth thing i suggest you to do is to check out music tutorials you know i don't know if you know this guy but he's freaking amazing you know he makes these orchestral tutorials where you know he teaches people how to write orchestral music but yeah you know you want to check out channels like mine for example that offer you knowledge on how to write the type of music you want to write with tutorials that not only explain how to like how to do stuff like how to create the sounds but also explain you why things end up working the way they do so in my tutorials i take a lot of time to talk about you know explain in detail why things work the way they work because you know i think it's very important as you're learning something to not only learn how to do it but also learn why it works that way because it's going to unlock many doors into your thinking and into your knowledge so make sure that you check out youtube channel with tutorials on orchestral music or music music in general that really 
enri enrich your mind in terms of skills, in terms of, you know, mindset even, you know? And I have tutorials on mindset, like these four here are really important and I want you to check them out if you're subscribed to my channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe right now because there are many, many tutorials coming at you very soon and there are many quite um, already. So check those out if you haven't yet. And here are a few other channels I suggested to check out, like Daniel James, who is a composer who made the music for Metal Gear 5, Solid 5, or he, you know, made part of the music on that game. Sometimes he releases tutorial in this channel or nice live streams where you can learn as, as he composes. And you should check out his Twitch channel as well. Also, Seamless, DR is silent. Seamless is a guy who I've been following for years and he is like my favorite music guru of the internet because he explains things and explains why they work that way. Now, his channel is completely based on dubstep and <laughs> it's not necessarily orchestral music. But like he has like he has videos on mindset and also some of explanations um like about mixing, mastering and stuff that you can import into your orchestral music. And as the last thing, Varian, who is a really great composer, and he used like in the beginning of his YouTube channel, he used to make tutorials about you know the music theory basics. Also, one guy I forgot to mention is this friend of mine who's called Ashton Gleckman, and he's a very young composer, and he's like pretty much my the opposite of me. Like he makes orchestral music, but he relies heavily on music theory and teaches in a very academic way about how to compose orchestral music. And he also makes you know live streams with discussions or explanations about film music. You know, so. He's really great, and I suggested to check out his channel as well because he's really one of those guys that explain you how things work and why. So check out people like myself, Ashton, Seamless, etc., and learn from them from their YouTube channels. Another important source of knowledge are courses, and you know, there is always this website that I mention every single of my videos for one reason because it's really good, and it's this one, Evanant, and it's a new website where. A, friend, a few friends of mine, you know, put together their knowledge and started to release these courses. So there is one on cinematic music, which teaches you how to start from a simple idea and bring it to become a really uh, rich and, uh, you know, interesting orchestration. And there is this other course on cinematic music, like, sorry, trailer music. So it's specific on trailer music. Then there's this one on basics of music production. So there are many different courses. And all of these have something to teach you, especially if you're a beginner, you can learn from any of these courses. But the course I will start from is this one, the cinematic music one, if you want to make orchestral music. So um, let's check out, for example, this cinematic course. So I am enrolled into this course, actually, because this is a course that I had like, taken two years back when it was uh, different. Now. Arn Anderson uploaded, like, updated this course and made it much, much better. And he gave me free access because I was an old student of the same course. But um, here's what they look like. For example, this is the orchestra course uh, from, from the inside. And you have all the different sections, you know, with many different um, topics or many different chapters. And there, you know, there's everything, introduction, composition, how to write good melodies, how to write good motifs, harmony additional elements and even like orchestration. And there are sections for every single orchestral family and a section on orchestration or setting your track and one on production. So you have a lot of stuff and also videos, like there are text and video explanations. So for example, here there is a video explanation on leveling your mixes here that you can watch and you know, you can also comment, you know, ask, you know, participate in the discussion with other students and stuff. So this is a really nice environment to be in, both to learn and also to connect with other students. And this course is like 300 bucks and, you know, you can get it in the link in the description of this video. And 300 bucks is quite an investment, but you see all the amount of information which is, you know, put into this course. and. Just studying this single course will just will be like a shortcut for like I don't know two full years of full you know work you know so 
If you pay those 300 bucks, you're going to save yourself two years or even more of self-teaching, you know. So courses are really amazing for that. And even mentorships, not only on Evident, but every website which has really valid courses and valid teachers. I love Evident because like the guys behind these courses, courses are friends of mine and they're young people like me who are working in the industry of, you know, modern orchestral music as it is right now. Other websites that have courses are usually from older guys who have been spending years into the music industry and what they're teaching you is usually stuff that worked 10 or 20 years ago but that is not necessarily modern while now like Arne Anderson, Christian Bacic, etc those guys are making the music the music for movie trailers which you see in television right now and you know just as I am also but I haven't released a course yet maybe I'm going to make one and this is what they look like like when you go to uh, if you want to purchase a course like this is what the page looks like and you get all the syllabus like you, you can see before you get the course how it's structured and what you will learn and you can go and pay just one single payment or four monthly payments and i think the payment is handled with paypal or maybe credit card even and you have a 30-day uh, money-back guarantee. So if you do not like the course, you can get a full refor- f- refund in 30 days. But I think, like, from, from what I heard from all the people who, take, who took the courses, and, you know, I heard from them because I also work for Evident, everyone is loving them, everyone is learning, and I'm seeing the results in so many people. So if you want to learn faster and in a more precise way without making errors, saving yourself a lot of time and hustle, get one of these courses or you know get multiple you know the more you get the more you study the more you learn faster so or also get another course outside of evident if you want and if you want to get a course on evident the link is in the description of this video also another thing you should i mentioned is mentorship if you can find a person who is more expert than you that can help you because you know mentors are amazing like that and oftentimes you need to pay them like i used to uh, have them have a mentorship with varian and it was paid of course but I learned so much, you know, in just those six hours of Skype calls, I learned incredibly, like, I cannot even start to begin to tell you uh, how much I learned, you know. So if you're interested in learning fast, get one of these courses, maybe get a mentorship as well, if you can. Okay, tip number six is if you want to learn how to write good music, here are two exercises you can make. Like, first one is write, try to you know, exercise writing good arrangements with good melodies and good chords going on with piano alone. And this is going to help you because it's going to be a short exercise. Since you're, you're only going to use a piano, you're not going to have to deal with orchestration and instrumentation, which is going to make the, the process to writing a song easier because you're only using one instrument, the piano, which is the most simple, in my opinion. So first exercise, you know, write arrangements on piano, write many of them, try to make them interesting, even if they're only piano with interesting chord, interesting melodies, which are easy to follow, but also nice to hear, like explain, explain in my other tutorials. The second exercise you can do is write the music of other people uh, by ear, you know? So it's something I personally do every time. So that's the reason why you see so many covers on my YouTube tutorial. And, you know, what I do is I take, in my case, Final Fantasy soundtracks, because I would like to learn how to write that type of music, you know, Final Fantasy music. Because my ultimate aspiration is to write a music for a Final Fantasy game. And what I do is I take the, the Final Fantasy soundtracks I like the most, and I listen to them and I write down by ear in my uh, in FL Studio um, what I hear. And I try to recreate the same sound or even add a little bit more to it, but still, you know, analyzing the music of other people like that. So that helps me into one, analyzing and understanding what is going on, and also understanding how to replicate the same thing so how to orchestrate like those guys how to you know write music like those guys so um analyzing other people's music and writing it you know writing mock-ups realistic mock-ups it's really an amazing thing to do tip number seven at this stage if you're at the beginning do not focus on learning mixing and mastering focus instead on learning to arrange beautiful pieces so yeah tip number seven is focus on arrangement and i talked about this in my uh, the number one rule to orchestral mixing video, which if you haven't checked out yet, go check it out right after this video because it's going to help you immensely into avoiding 
a very big mistake which people usually make. So yeah, tip seven, focus on learning arrangement first. Then when your arrangements are quite good and they sound good on their own, learn a bit about mixing and then learn a bit about mastering. Of course, you can learn these three things together and I kind of did that, but I see a lot of people when doing that, they end up believing into misconceptions and they fuse the three fields together in strange ways, producing bad results. So I think it's much easier and clearer to do one thing at a time, starting from arrangement. Tip number eight, which is the most important and I left it as a last one because it's the one I want to leave in your mind the most is stop planning and start doing, you know, you have no idea how many people out there have been planning for years, for years they have been watching tutorials, gathering the sample, the best sample libraries and stuff and learning and they have never composed their first song. So all the things they learned, they entered here and they went out through there. Because if you do not apply what you learn, if you do not apply what you hear, what you, what you study, etc., you're not going to internalize that, you know? Music, like making music, creating music, is what is going to help you internalize and really learn the stuff you absorb from the sources of knowledge on the internet, etc. So what I, I, I need you to do, like what I want you to do is to do first, you know? And I, I know it's weird heard from me, who, who I'm, from a guy who makes tutorials, but, you know, I do not want you guys to watch my YouTube channel as a, a practice of mental masturbation where you just watch the content and you feel like, oh yeah, I'm getting better, but you're not actually writing music, you know? I want you guys to write the damn music now. And, you know, after you've written your piece and maybe like you check it out and if it doesn't sound good as you, as you want it to, come check out the tutorials on my channel to improve upon the things that you know that you need to improve upon, you know? So you come and you learn, and after, you know, straight after, you go, you open your DAW again and you write again a new piece on the, uh, trying to apply the new knowledge you just acquired. And that is what is going to internalize that knowledge. That is going to, what, it's going to be what is going to, you know, level up your musical intuition and your musical skills, making, writing music, you know, not checking out tutorials or checking out courses and not doing anything about it. So definitely do stuff like I, I if it's going to sound weird but if you even do more than you study you're going to have higher chances of nailing you know, ach achieving successes compared to those people who spend a lot of time studying and lo know a lot of stuff but do not apply it you know this has been it's been like that for me and it's the reason why my friends like who compose like who who I have studied music for years are shocked at seeing me you know having my music featured on movie trailers or having my you know music featured on I don't know YouTube videos and stuff you know they see you know me having success and stuff and they're like oh shit how do you do it what, what are you doing to get all these results I'm writing music man you know I'm just writing music that's the thing you need to do the work you know so stop planning and start doing then when you do mistakes by doing you can go back and plan <laughs> the way in which to fix that mistake and after you planned after you learned you go straight to fix that mistake and you straight write a new piece where you try to make your brass more realistic you know for example so always do that like go back and forth from planning to doing but give more important importance to the doing part and those are the eight tips I wanted to give you. As a recap, tip one, go on musictheory.net and learn at least the basics of music theory. Second tip, get yourself a nice DAW and get yourself um, a Composer Cloud membership as um, your first sample libraries. Third tip, get a nice computer. So get a nice CPU, nice amount of RAM and a nice hard drive if you want a MIDI keyboard. Fourth tip is check out tutorials from people like me. Like if you haven't already, check out all of the tutorials on this channel because in every single tutorial there is a golden nugget. Actually, there are many and I always make sure to include many. Also check out the tutorials from my friend Ashton Gleckman from Varian, Seamless and Daniel James. Fifth tip, go get, if you have the um, financial avail availability, 
maybe you know do not spend that money like take the money you spend on video games or on hanging out with friends and invest it into one of these courses link to buy the courses in the description of this video sixth tip what was the sixth tip i kind of forgot um yeah do exercises like write uh, piano arrangements and write music rewrite music from people you admire seventh tip focus on writing good arrangements first eighth tip start doing now i mean it and yeah so that's it if you have more questions which i forgot to address feel free to ask them in the comments because i answer them in the comments and also other people can answer them for you because that's where the community part of this channel is so yeah um that's it for this long explainative tutorial i hope you learned a lot and i'm looking forward to see you writing great music and you know it's going to take time to get good but do not get discouraged you know like if a dude like me made it thus far you know i had the worst odds when i began I had no musical knowledge no musical skills couldn't play a single instrument you know if i made it thus far anyone can do it so do it and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and check out the rest of these channel tutorials and share this video with a friend who might, you know, earn some value out of it. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I see you in the next one.